All right, we are back with a new video, and for the final time this season, we'll be updating the Big Brother 24 power rankings towards the end of week 11, also known as the final four. And I'm not gonna lie, this week is pretty boring in terms of movement, which is probably expected. I mean, it is the final four, and with the competitions happening so quickly and the week pretty much being set at this point, I feel like there isn't too much to say, so I'll try to make this video pretty brief. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So starting off at number five, we have the boot from the last eviction. And here we have Alyssa. And this isn't too surprising. Now we did kind of see some intrigue happening at the eviction where we obviously saw Turner voting to evict Alyssa while Brittany threw her vote onto Taylor, which forced Monty to break the tie there. And while there really wasn't any doubt over Monty breaking the tie in Taylor's favor, it obviously sends Alyssa out the door there. And on the whole, I feel like Alyssa didn't really play that impressive of a game. I mean, there were plenty of points where she was out of the majority, some of which were her own fault, namely in the formation of the leftovers, where a key reason why that force was because she had leaked to Kyle about the existence of old school, which informed Kyle that he was out of the core power structure prompting him to create the leftovers, which obviously left her at the bottom. And obviously we saw her relationship with Kyle throughout a lot of this season, which was somewhat interesting for the most part, where on one hand, we did see Kyle really work to save her on a number of weeks when she could have been in danger, but we also saw him not really trust her enough to give her key pieces of information, which definitely was a bit weird. And the fact that she stuck with him as long as she did was a bit baffling at the end of the day, Though eventually she does distance himself from him in the week in which Kyle was evicted, of course. But considering that she did have the best path towards the end of the game, it's not too surprising to see her go out here. So because of that, she is here at number five. And with that, there are four players left in the game. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely it is that they'll win the game from this point. But at number four, we have the person who is probably going to be going home on Thursday night. But here we have Brittany and... Obviously, she's the target here where Taylor won the HOH and Monty won the veto, which is probably the most critical key, key there, as obviously Monty wants to go to three with both Turner and Taylor here. And with that, Brittany basically ha doesn't have too many options moving forward. And even if she were to get on by somehow, I don't really see her winning the game. I don't really see her winning final HOH. And even if she were to somehow miraculously win final HOH, I don't see her winning a jury vote anyway. Again, I've been on this train now for the last couple of weeks, and it seems like she's about to finally be evicted here. So because of that, she is here at number four. Now I'm moving on to number three, and we have the same person that I had last week in the spot, but here we have Turner. And obviously Turner's in a pretty bad spot at this point, where on one hand, he is obviously going to be getting to final three here with Monty, who was his closest ally, but he's obviously getting here in a spot to where I don't feel like he wins the game in either scenario. And it's sort of funny too, because he basically has to win final HOH just to get to the end to Monty and lose in that spot. And a lot of that comes from this misconception that he's this big jury threat, where for whatever reason, people seem to think that Turner will beat anyone in a jury vote, which I don't really feel like is the case here. And the fact that he is really being harmed by this perception, along with the fact that it's not simply reality, is a pretty big knock to his game as well. Obviously, you had his move at the final five where he obviously votes to evict Alyssa here in a spot where it really doesn't benefit his game at all. It really felt like he was doing it more so to go against Brittany than to help his own game here, where by voting out Alyssa here, he's obviously getting rid of someone who theoretically could have saved him moving forward and someone he theoretically could have been competitive against. Although even then, I know I don't even think he beats Alyssa, if I'm being perfectly honest. But by getting rid of Alyssa in the position that he does, where he doesn't even tell Alyssa until the very last moment that he's sending her out, even though he had said that he was going to do so the night before, the fact that he kept tiptoeing around the issue is really bad jury management. And I don't see Alyssa really respecting that in a spot where I felt like Turner probably could have gotten Alyssa's jury vote in certain scenarios had he just owned up to voting her out here. And that's not even getting to the fact that it's not even good for his game. It harms his chances again to the end, harms his chances of winning a jury vote. And the fact that he's still so gung ho against Brittany, despite the fact that she's the only person left in the game that he can be is pretty bad at the end of the day. 
And now he's going to the final three where he's not even guaranteed final two, despite the fact that he's probably the least likely winner of the final three. So at the end of the day, I feel like Turner's in a pretty bad spot. And plus, I feel like he had some pretty poor gameplay from this past week. So because of that, he is here at number three. Now I'm moving on to number two. And honestly, I feel like these two are very likely to end up at the end together. And it's just a matter of the order. But number two, I did decide to go with Taylor here. Now, the main reason I, why I have Taylor at number two here is I feel like she's the least guaranteed to get to the final two of the top two here, where she's still in a pretty good spot where at this point, even Monty wants to take her to the end, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, largely because Monty thinks that uh, Turner's his big jury threat and also the fact that Monty seems to be getting into a showman's with her, which is something all on its own. Really, as long as Turner doesn't win final HOH, Taylor should be pretty locked in at final two at this point. And obviously she is the current HOH here and decides to protect Monty more or less. Now, granted, Monty wins the veto anyway, but she is set up to get into a pretty good position here coming into this final three. And I feel like even at the final two at this point, I talked about my jury scenarios video, how I felt like Monty is probably the person that seems mo more likely to win that jury vote. But honestly, I think Taylor still has a pretty good shot to win as well. I could definitely see her getting some of those critical swing votes that could allow her to beat Monty at the end. And if she wins final HOH, I feel like that's another thing that could put something on her resume, something that the jury could ultimately respect. So it's not as if I feel like Taylor's necessarily going to lose at the end, even if she goes with Monty at the end. But I feel like the number one person is a bit more locked in to the end. So because of that, I do have her here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Big Brother 24 is Monty. And the main reason I have Monty this high is I feel like he is the most guaranteed to get to the end at this point. Obviously, Taylor has said that she wants to go to the end with him. Turner, I feel like, would probably side with taking Monty to the end over T Taylor. And also, I feel like Monty has a lot of potential to just win the final HOH anyway. So I feel like the fact that Monty is pretty much guaranteed final two at this point is a pretty big boon to his game and a pretty big boon to his win equity. And... There's also the fact that he does want to take Taylor to the end, which I do knock from him to a certain degree, as I feel like Turner is probably the easier beat. Now, granted, he doesn't seem to recognize this. He seems to think that Turner's this big jury throw, which, as I alluded to a moment ago, I don't think it's the case. But I still feel like he has a number of win equity, regardless of which way he goes, should he end up at the end, which I feel like is a pretty big credit to his game here. And I feel like Monty is in a good spot to still win the game nonetheless, which is why I do have him here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out with the channel. And I know this was a shorter video today, but that's just where we are at the season. So I guess things all work out in the end. But as usual, I'll be doing my postseason coverage for the season once it ends. So stay tuned for that. I also have Survivor content coming your way, especially with the premiere coming out today, which should be pretty exciting, so stay tuned for that. Amazing Race is also starting up, so I'll be doing weekly power rankings for that. Stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, be sure to join my Discord server. I'll leave a link to join the description. A lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that is the video. See ya.